I get off the plane July 2nd, 1994, in late afternoon, into LA, walked across the road, the cop said, what are you doing? I said, I'm going for a walk. He said, no, you're not. Go back inside right now. Do you have any ID? No, go back inside right now. So I just turned back and went back inside. That was the very first interaction that I had on the street with anybody in the United States. Oh yeah, yeah, it was a crazy culture shock. Why, why did you come to America? Um, because I wanted a skateboard. I came here because I wanted a skateboard. Simple as that. Like I grew up, I grew up playing soccer and cricket. But then when I started skateboarding, that's all I wanted to do. And, you know, to, to have the dream of riding on smooth concrete, red paint curbs, that's all I wanted to do. And I wanted to go and see the stuff. So I wanted to see, okay, what does it look like? I've seen it in the videos. I've seen it in the magazines. What does it look like to me? And, uh, and when I came and skated here, you know, once I got in the groove of living in a foreign country when I was 18, I enjoyed it, because I, I enjoyed to skate a lot. Jeff from Liverpool is probably the smartest of the team. He saved up all his money and bought a 1970 Karma gear. This is pride and joy. The flip guys came to Huntington Beach, so it was kind of a thing, because it's like, this was my town, I lived here and a whole basically skateboard team moved to Huntington Beach. I was like skating with Tom a little bit and Jeff was more reclusive. I mean, watching Tom was just insane. He was like the check your brain at the door style, like how Muska used to be, you know? It's almost like he skated better if he was stoned. And Ian, Ian kind of introduced us almost like, hey, you should go hang out with Jeff. He's a really cool dude. And it was almost kind of awkward, like almost like he set up a date, like go, go over and hang out with Jeff at the flip house, you know? So I like showed up there like, hey, what's up? You want to go skating and stuff? So, and it kind of, he was, he was right. Like we kind of started hanging out a lot. Lately, me and Jeff have uh, been into punk rock. It's like the stuff we heard when we were kids. Typical day in the life at Templeton, Jeff gets 28 lines and gets one. I owe, I owe a, a massive, a huge amount to Ed Templeton and his wife because I was young at that time and I didn't know a lot of people. And I'd go hiking with Ed and stuff like that. Like he was into stuff that I was into. That really helped me kind of feel like, okay, like maybe I could be accepted or something. It's funny, my, my understanding of this is that he grew up in a removed area from the skateboard scene and saw the videos and thought, this is how the pros skate. And so his standard of what was normal was super high. Because he came and basically got the cover of Transworld three, three flipping that, uh, what is it, 15 or something down at uh, down in San Diego. And I remember talking to him after that and he was kind of like, he told me this, he said like, he's like, man, we watched the videos. Like I saw Chris Markovich and thought that that's how he skated every day. So that's what I wanted to like, when I, got good that's like what was my standard was like being that good every day i was able to skate more than i was ever used to um, i had access to like perfect skate spots more than i ever had and i was around professional skaters i grew up idolizing and ed being one of those guys yeah i think after about two years i started to feel a sense of okay i have goals now you know i have goals and i have you know, the confidence and a foundation of friends and support around me to start really getting back on track and skating a lot. Do you remember when you first heard of Jeff Raleigh? Yeah, man, there was this dude, he was coming out of England and it was just like, he was doing all these savage tricks, like hitting all these savage ledges and rails and stuff. And you could tell that he just like, kind of was convicted in that sense, like where he was just gonna go all out on something. So it was easy to recognize that energy, you know? The thing people got to realize is like, Jeff really is a pioneer of a way to skate. You know, like if you look at it, th there is people that pioneer. Like I remember being around, we'd skate Huntington Park all the time. Here's Chad Muska and that whole thing was taken off and you have TSA and this influence and Chad's a guy that's going to show up with his boom box, do his thing and there's a scene. Then you have Jamie and it's all the whole welcome to hell thing and he's going to have the last part and Jamie's doing his thing. And then you have Jeff, and Jeff at that time was blowing up 
cover of magazines, doing all this stuff, and he was always that way. It wasn't to outdo people. It was like you knew what he was doing, was pushing skating. It was always like that. It seemed like he was always on a, a conquering mission. And, you know, as far as like, you know, let's say Tom or whatever, he was kind of on a different flowy kind of mission. And I really uh, respected Jeff for the fact that, you know, he hooked up with Stuart and he kind of knew that like, that's what he wanted to capture his ability with. He wanted to do a certain thing. And so he would make an appointment with, with Daniel Sturt. And that, and that meant it was on. Because if he was going to like get Daniel up from San Diego to shoot this thing, and Jan was a gnarly dude, then he had to like, he was going to do it. It's like once, once the call to Sturt's done, it's like, all right, it's like, it's going to be the, the gnarliest thing ever for that time period. Jeff's spots were pretty gnarly. There was a point where Jeff would have photos on stuff that was like, dude, all you have to do is an ollie or something here. And it's like, that's like death defying. You know, you could just tell it's like those two dudes, like, all right, we're getting up at six in the morning. We're going to skate this thing or something like that. And it was just super gnarly. We showed up at this apartment rail on Alabama Street in HB. And there was a barbecue that's rusted and it's chained to the bottom of the rail. There's two push run up and you got to move plants and shit to get at it, right? And before we even get out, get out the car, he's like, here's the keys, Molly, here's my wallet. You know where the nearest hospital is, right? And I'm like, wow, really, we're going to start off like that? He's like, oh, here's, here's, here's my VX, I'll put it on the tripod. Just press the red button, Sturt's there. He's shooting a sequence and filming it. So he's doing two things, I'm pressing the button. You know, he's, he's kind of in a league of his own, really, because, you know, not everybody knows exactly what they want to do. Some people just kind of tag along for the session, but Jeff knew every time, hey, I'm going to go here and I'm going to try this and I'm going to eat shit or I'm going to make it. And then he'd go to the spot and he would either make it or eat shit. That's the other thing about him, too. It would be... <laughs> He'd be like, well, got a good slam. It's good footage. A really good slam's good footage. I definitely have to now and again take a good slam to be able to make the trick. There's a lot of truth to that. I don't really think about it, to tell you the truth. I do the best I can to put it out of my mind until I'm right there and present and in front of the situation. That way, my uh, adrenaline doesn't start moving because you only really get like 20 minutes of peak performance, if you want to call it, when your adrenaline starts kick, kicking in. And when you are skating stuff where you could die or if you fall off, break your neck, break your back, you're paralyzed, like the slams like that, you can't mess around with that. You've got to be in the right frame of mind or you don't approach it. You all right, man? I don't even want it, like honestly, I don't want it. If it doesn't give you it, don't take it. Just fucking let it go. Yeah, fucks with you. You know what I mean? Some days you do it, some days you fucking get pissed. Some days your hands fucking almost fall off, like today. And then some days it works, and then some days you go to hospital, and then some days you go to hospital at night, and then it still works. Some days it fucking...